Ariel Helwani post-fight at Bellator 222 alongside Chael Sonnen following his fight against Leona Machida. Chael, I appreciate you doing this. Came Thank in you. second in that one, Helwani. I got the silver medal. Did you see that? Real back and forth battle. I was very proud of you tonight, you, my friend. Thank you. How are you feeling? I feel good. Listen, uh, I don't mind losing to his positions. You know, some of those knees and stuff I knew were going to be tricky. But it was a frustration for me to lose in my own positions. He's in it. He was on top of me. And I felt a couple of times that I could have gotten up, but it was an effort issue. And, Errol, I just think I fired my last bullet. How close were you to being out in the first round? Oh, my goodness. I don't, it's hard to say. He actually had some ground and pound that surprised me. Some of those fists he was turning over and whatnot. And, again, there was an opportunity to get up. Uh, and I was confused more than anything. Well, how'd this guy get on top of him? went up here again. And um, it, it was a, all, overall, he was a very good fighter. Really hard to get pinned down. I mean, there's always space. And then when he came in, he'd show you a hand, he'd show you a foot, and then he'd knee at the. You're blocking three things at once. It was difficult. You timed those knees very well, right? When yeah. you were shooting, the, once in the first and then once in the second. Yeah, that's right. I think he knew I was, uh, you know, greedy for a takedown. It was hard. I got my hands on him at one point. I thought there was some opportunity there, but uh, it was not to be. In your mind going into this fight, did you tell yourself if you didn't win that you were going to retire? No, no. I fully thought I was going to win this fight. I was going to call out Ryan and Bader. I had the whole thing ready. Uh, but, you know, I, I really do. I, I dug deep. I've had a hard life. You know, I worked really hard my whole life for a lot of goals. And I, I swear to goodness, I, I think you have like a, a scale. And I've just, I've just used up all my toughness. I really have. I feel like I'm not as tough as I used to be. I don't want it as bad as I used to want it. I used to walk through stuff like this. And uh, tonight, you know, the referee, when he stopped the fight, he looked at me and said, Chael, I'm trying to help you. I looked. I said, what took you so long? You had no problem with this. I quit fighting four minutes ago. Why did we even go to the break? So here we are. So how did you make that decision? What was going on in your mind when you decided to take off the gloves and do that? Well, I was on a bit of a championship run. If I, if I beat Leota tonight, I would have fought Bader for the world championship. And uh, that was the only reason I was in the sport, you know? I promised my father I'd, I'd uh, you know, I was just in the sport. Do you leave with any regrets? No, no. I, I loved every minute. It's beautiful to have your son and daughter yeah, here. I know your wife. Too. Look at this guy. Yeah. What was it like? Was good, this one. The first time you fight in front of them live, correct? Yeah, that's right. What was that like? Uh, it was great. I mean, we had a lot of fun. It was a family affair, and we're not done. You know, we're still part of the Bellator family. We're going to get on a plane and go out to London. We're going to call some fights. And uh, I got plenty of energy to call fights, Ariel. But as far as getting in there and, and, and going with some of these guys and trying to reclaim a championship or get back even to a number one contender's fight, it's tough. You know, my last 13 fights were all against world champions in three different weight classes. I beat 11 of them, but, uh, but I didn't beat them all, and my, my time has, has ended. You know how retirements go in this sport. Yeah. Do you know definitively that this is it for you? Yes, yes. I'm a man of my word. I told Scott Coker I would give him uh, five fights. I gave him those five fights. It was up tonight. I'm not done competing. I'm still the uh, defending Abu Dhabi Super Fight Champion. I will defend my, my Super Fight belt at Abu Dhabi, but as far as MMA, I am done. And, and what a great honor for you. you. You retire undefeated and undisputed. Undefeated and undisputed. Three different weight classes. The greatest fighter the sport has ever seen. And could I ask just before we go, how do you want Chael Sonnen to be remembered? Your, your legacy is, is a very interesting one, and I don't know if you know this. You probably don't. You're being showered with praise and love online right now. Uh, you've had your ups and your downs. How do you want to be remembered in this sport? Well, that was very beautiful. I will tell you in fairness, I don't really want to be remembered in the sport for, for too long. For tonight, you know, be nice to me, and that, that'll make me feel good because it's going to be a hard night for me. But, uh, you know, I kind of remember those guys when I was in high school. They'd come back to the football games after they graduated wearing their letterman's jacket. And I thought that was a weird thing. It's like, you know, you got to move on in life. And I got some, some beautiful kids and a beautiful wife, and uh, I'm looking forward to what they want to do. And whether it's, it's MMA or wrestling, the things that I love, whatever they want to do, I'm going to be the chauffeur. And uh, if, if, to answer how I'd like to be remembered, Remember, I was a competitor first, and when I started in this sport, it was true tough guys that wanted to compete. We didn't need a bunch of money. We didn't need a bunch of cameras in front of us. We wanted to compete and find out who was the best. And if I could leave anything for the for the locker room and the boys in the back, I hope they find that spirit again. Do you think you'll miss competing? Oh, I'll miss it terribly. This is very hard for me. Yeah, this, this is all I know. Is it harder than you expected? When you, you probably thought about this moment before, right? Yeah, I've thought about I've dreaded this moment before, and uh, I didn't think it was going to come tonight, but... It was an effort issue, and I just, I didn't have the effort to get up off the bottom. I knew how to get off the bottom. I knew how to get off the bottom from a guy that didn't think I'd be there. And uh, it's time. I got to walk away. And you obviously have a career in broadcasting, but would you like to remain as a coach? Are you going to remain a part of the team at ATT now in Oregon? Yeah, I'll be a part of the team. I, I don't know how much I'll be coaching as much as being there supporting, you know, Jake Smith and Austin Vander for many other names. I, I better not start the name game. But some guys I'm very close with that did a lot for me. And, and now it's my turn to try to, you know, get back and make sure I'm there for them, even if it's from the outside. But my days of uh, going in there and grinding and sweating uh, and sacrificing, I, I think, in fairness, are behind me.
Chill, it has been an honor, my friend. It really has it, been. It really, it's been quite the ride. A lot of people say that like they feel they have to, but you mean it. I mean it. it. It has been such a pleasure covering your career. You have given us so much time, so many great moments, so many great memories. You always made it fun for us through the good and the bad. And uh, I'm honored to call you a partner. I, I really enjoy working with you, and I'm looking forward to many years together. That's very beautiful. Thank you for that, Aaron. Congrats on a great career. Thank you. Ariel Hawani post fight at Bell Tour 222 alongside Dylan Dennis, who submitted Max Humphrey tonight in the first round via armbar. Congratulations on your second pro win. Were you happy with it? Um, yeah, it was. It was in a sense because I got it done with adversity, but my like I'm so much better than that. Like my fluidity and like the way I set up moves are so much more, you know, advanced. But I got it done, so that's all that matters. Were you hoping to win via TKO? Did you want to ground and pound him? I'm not gonna lie, it was really fun beating his ass, I swear to God. I felt like it was like, I don't know, man, it was just weird to explain when you start fucking hitting someone 100%, like, because I never fought before, I never had amateur fights, and in the gym, you're not, not you know, hitting someone, so I just got out there and I started grilling. And I actually learned, like, a lot, I learned, like, a lot in the fight, too, because, like, the referee was like, oh, we're gonna stop it, so I started going, like, crazy. And then all of a sudden, he kind of, like, had, like, a second win, I was like, oh, shit, man, my arms, you know, so kind of was, like, good to learn that in the fight, you know? But yeah, it was fun to beat his ass, I swear to God. It was really good. My understanding is you went into this fight somewhat injured. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, the Friday before the fight, so one week before the fight, I tore my LCL completely. Um, I couldn't walk, couldn't stand. Like, it, it was terrible. And, man, I didn't know if I could do it, I swear. Like, but, you know, I just, I felt like, I feel like, you know, if I did it now, eventually I'm going to have to do it. So, like, I, I took it as, like, a life experience. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I pulled it off, so it's really, it makes everything sweeter, you know? That's why I kept thinking, like, you know, it just adds to your story, and uh, it's all sweeter in the end, you know? Which knee? I don't want to, no, it was my left knee. But you see, I had the two uh, knee braces on, so I wanted to make it look like it didn't. I felt like a freaking old man, like old man wrestler with two knee braces on, but, you know, we got it done, man. I'm not, like, I'm not just all talking, you know? Like, I'm gonna show up and fight no matter what, so. I had no leg, basically. I couldn't stand on it. I couldn't bend it. I couldn't pull my. I couldn't play guard this whole week. I couldn't play half guard. Nothing. So I just like, either you're gonna do it or not. And like one of my friends said to me, like, if you were in the street and this guy attacked you and you were fighting for your life and you had no LCL and I have like my knee was completely immobile, would you still beat him? And I was like, you know what? Yeah. So just went out there and did it. How does it feel now? Terrible. Can't walk. Yeah. I, I need some proper 12. <laughs> I need something. I need someone to numb this thing. I think I'm dying. <laughs> do you think you'll need surgery? I don't think so. I don't have an MCL or a meniscus, so I just... Where'd it go? I went away with a heel hook. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm just going to have nothing in my knee, and I don't know, man. I think when you have a will and you and you want something, you know, you, there's, there's excuses and then there's a way, so... I think 95% of fighters would have pulled out of this fight. 95, and I kept telling myself, like, you're different, you know, and this is why you're going to be the best, and... Even John Jones this week said, like, this is Mark My Words, this guy will never be champion, you know, but he wouldn't be champion with without the stuff he was taking, you know, he's a cheater, so he can... Sorry, Sh that ESPN. No, it's all good, we'll, we'll bleep it. Uh, shades of UFC 189, when your friend Connor fought Chad Mendez with an injured knee, did you ask him for advice how to deal with this mentally and physically? Yeah, of course, I mean, uh, we talked about it a lot, and he, he was just like, you know what, man, like, you could do it, so we, we obviously talked back and forth, he was making sure how was it, this and that, and, uh, you know, it was just, he's always there for me with advice, man. He feel like he's been through it all, and, you know, so it's like, he, he knows everything, and he knows the mental side and the physical side, so, you know, he's obviously a great mentor to have. I wish he could have been here. He was supposed to be here, but, you know, he didn't make it, but it would have been awesome to have him here. When would you like to return? I'm ready for anybody, man. Even watch, like, watching the main event is like, man, that's not me, you know, like, I mean. I think you're better than them. 100%. Um... I was saying this before, like even like Nailman, like <laughs> even back in the day in jiu-jitsu tournaments, like we would get him the first match, and like me and my friends would be high fiving, be like, "Oh, that's the easiest match!" Like we gotta we gotta buy the first round. So like that's he's not the level that I am. You know, I'm a world champion. And he he never won the world. He never touched the Pan Am championship. So you know, it's a different level, man. And people will see. Well, I know you're injured, but uh, you look very good. I must say. I mean, the shoes here are something else. This outfit. It's all on camera, though, because that was the whole point of it. No? Charlie, you get a good look uh, at uh, Dylan Dennis here. What, I got the whole thing, man. I come out, you know, I got the crowd going, I fought, and I got the after. So, you know what I mean? It's it's a different level of me. I feel. You know, this is not just a normal fighter. You saw him even out there, all the pressure and everything. This show was. I was the co-main event, basically. You know, so. And uh, when you're this good, you don't feel pressure. So. To do it at MSG, something you've always wanted to do, right? I didn't even set in yet, but it did set in when I first came here, and I, like, I thought I wasn't going to be like, I was like, yeah, you know what, like, I fought everywhere, like, this and that, and then I kind of got here, and I was like, 
this is MSG, you know? So it was super surreal. Even when I came out and the crowd was going crazy, I could see all my friends and family. But uh, yeah, I think it has a set in you. I think later on it will. Congrats, Don. Feel better. Appreciate it very much. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.